Good morning. Coming up here, our team is live in Israel with the latest on the ground as President Biden prepares to visit the region in hopes of heading off a wider war and a humanitarian catastrophe. Also, don't miss another Show Me the Money. GMA is helping some basketball fans find unclaimed cash. We're going to show you how you could score, too. Plus, we've got another Monday night football surprise for a super fan family. You don't want to miss it on GMA. And ahead in the next hour, GMSA, an argument during Monday night football spirals out of control on San Antonio's southwest side. The bizarre details in just moments. Plus, the city of San Antonio using part of its $3.7 billion budget to tackle homelessness. Their plan to do so and the pushback they're getting from some in the public. And up next, the Rangers going back to Arlington with a huge two-game lead over the Astros. How they were able to pull off two wins on the road. Checking Trans Guide right now, 281 at 410. Things look great. The uh, heater will probably be going in the car this morning. We're down to 48 here in the city, much colder out of the Texas Hill Country. A complete wrap up coming up. We are following breaking news, a deadly shooting by San Antonio police. Trina Weber is live where it all happened on Colima Street near Guadalupe Ibarra, and that neighborhood is just west of downtown. Katrina joins us live, and Katrina, you mentioned earlier that the man who was shot had a gun. That's what police are telling us, and that's how the call came out over the radio, that there was a man with a gun running in this neighborhood. Now, we don't know what happened in between, but for some reason, a police officer did shoot that man, killing him. Right now, police have the scene all uh, roped off, as you can see, not just here, but there are also some side streets in this area that are roped off as well, where police apparently have some some evidence uh, related to this case. We're awaiting more information, possibly from the chief himself if he comes out, or a public information officer. But that's all we know at this point. This happened uh, right after 5 o'clock this morning. We can see someone rushing up now to talk to officers, perhaps someone related to the man who was shot. Uh, no information given out on him just yet. And again, we don't know how things escalated where, uh, from where the man was armed with a gun to uh, when police pulled their guns and then shot him. Again, that man dead here as a result of the shooting this morning. The investigation continues. Reporting live on the near west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. It is 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, October 17th. Thank you for starting your morning with us. We hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather, and it kind of continues today, but, of course, we start off cold at 48 degrees. AC, AC shouldn't have run at all last night. No. No. And uh, Mike Osterhage is here with more on uh, temperatures this morning. As we've been saying, coldest in seven months, based since yeah. uh, right around the 20th of March earlier this year. It is just beautiful. Sunrise is going to be spectacular. Grab a jacket. Grab your your sunglasses as we've got the camera pointed off to the east right there and uh, temperature right now still at 49 40 Bulverde 37 up the road at Bernie stage 39 at comfort and it's dropped down to 45 right there at Randolph and then there is a hint of a wind chill to deal with not much of a breeze, and that's why we're, we are getting so cool, because we've got clear skies, dry air, light wind, the three ingredients, but just enough of a, a breeze to make it feel like 42 there at Randolph and uh, 37, like I said, up the road. Bernie Stage 47 is the wind chill here in town. Temperature is going to be warming up very quickly once that sun rises up a little bit higher in the sky. We'll make it all the way up through the uh, 50s and 60s, getting up to 71 degrees then at noon today, and we will top off at 78. So we gained 30 throughout the day. Huge warm up, still about four degrees below normal. Plenty of sunshine, spectacular fall weather. Another good day tomorrow. Then things start to change. And yep, we're not done with summer temperatures yet. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, anything going on yet? Uh, well, Mike, we do have some problems. Our trans guide cameras are not catching uh, some of the issues that we're seeing on our map. But let's show you what's happening here along 90 at Couples. If you are heading out the door, let's say from Castroville, now would be the time to do it. Things are looking great, but it's definitely getting busier now that we've entered the 6 a.m. hour. Traffic, again, coming right at your screen there. A lot of folks traveling along 90 this early in the morning in the eastbound lanes, but that's always expected. But as I mentioned, our transguide cameras aren't capturing the problems. One of the issues that we've seen here is along I-35 northbound. This isn't too far from AT&T Center Parkway, where we do have a crash reported. I have to talk to our friends at Transguide about this. We have a few cameras in the area that could uh, possibly show us the conditions out there. But if you encounter any flashing lights, move over or slow down. No word yet on any injuries. But we'll keep you posted on that. If you are traveling into San Antonio, that journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should still be about 23 minutes. 25 along 281 south. 
southbound if you are heading in from Bolverde and from New Braunfels, 24 minutes along I-35 southbound. But we're going to keep a close eye on things as the morning commute does get moving. Again, 98 couples, not a bad shot just yet, but we will keep a close eye and have other updates for you throughout the morning. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to find those responsible for shooting and killing a man at an apartment complex parking lot late last night. Happened just before 11 p.m. in the 100 block of Emerald Ash on the city's south side near 410 and Morrison. Police say a man in his 20s was talking to someone in the parking lot when he was hit by gunfire. He later died at the scene. SAPD says a silver vehicle with three people inside was seen leaving the area shortly after the shots were fired. So far, there's no word on any arrests. Also overnight, an argument during the Cowboys game ends with two men being stabbed on the city's southwest side. It happened last night around 945 on MacArthur Avenue. This is between New Laredo Highway and Somerset Road. San Antonio police tell us that the men got into an argument over noise during the game, and that's when officers were told that the men stabbed each other several times. Both were rushed to the hospital. We have no information on their conditions. Happening today, Republicans will try to elect Congressman Jim Jordan as the new Speaker of the House. The House scheduled to vote on what could be a showdown for the gavel. However, not all Republicans are ready to elevate Jordan to the center seat of U.S. power. Some still upset over Kevin McCarthy's sudden ouster as Speaker two weeks ago. For now, some Republicans are calling for unity. Conference will have to decide at some point in time how urgent it is for us to get this government functioning again. And with what's going on in Israel, I think we're getting closer and closer to that point. Last week, Majority Leader Steve Scalise gave up his bid when he failed to get enough Republican support. However, with Donald Trump's backing, Jordan is close to having enough support. This is a live look at Gaza from southern Israel this morning. President Biden gearing up for high stakes meetings in the Mideast as the war between Israel and Hamas escalates. The president has already held several calls with Israel's prime minister since the Hamas terrorist attack last week. And now the two leaders are preparing to meet face to face. Here in the U.S., some 2,000 U.S. troops now on alert for a possible deployment to the Middle East to serve in a wide array of roles, including intelligence and medical support. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis is growing worse in Gaza. The death toll is approaching 3,000 people. As ABC's Rhiannon Alley reports, Hamas is accused of fighting efforts to restore water and help civilians evacuate. This morning, truckloads of aid were still idling at the Gaza-Egypt border, with diplomatic efforts to open the Rafah border crossing ongoing. Egypt has said the crossing is not officially closed, but was made inoperable due to Israeli airstrikes. Everything is, is getting worse. Uh, we're really exhausted uh, and we can't tolerate more, but we can do nothing. We have to stay in our houses. People in Gaza have been pleading for water, food and fuel after all routes out of the territory were closed ahead of a looming ground invasion by Israeli troops. Hospitals are on the verge of losing electricity, threatening the lives of thousands of patients. The director of one hospital in Gaza City telling ABC News last night the only generator that supplies electricity may run out of fuel within hours and then the hospital will be a mass grave. Authorities in Gaza say Israeli airstrikes have now killed more than 2,700 people, but at least 1,200 people are still believed to be buried under rubble. More than 3,700 residential buildings have been destroyed. We have been very patient, very clear, very patient, very tolerant about the humanitarian situation because we have said, and we stand by this, the civilians are not our enemies, Hamas is. The State Department now says nearly 1,000 U.S. citizens and their immediate family members have departed Israel on government chartered flights, and more than 4,000 seats were made available to Americans by air and sea. Adela Schutzberg is traveling via ship to Cyprus with her two children, hoping to reach Dallas by tomorrow. I'm constantly on edge, and uh, I can't do that to my kids. I can't let them live like this. Rihanna and Ali, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, state lawmakers still in Austin for this year's third special legislative session. The main issue is over border security and cracking down on human smugglers and illegal border crossings. DPS Director Steve McGraw spoke with state leaders about four Iranians who are on security threat watch lists that were caught at the southern border this month. The most recent one happening on Sunday. This last year in 2023, we've had 151 
individuals on the terrorism watch list apprehended at the southwest border. How should we handle that? When we hear that, how should we react to that? Well, it, 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 there's no way to react other than the fact that clearly the border matters. State lawmakers are now trying to pass bills that would give longer prison sentences for people found guilty of human smuggling and allow local authorities along the border to charge people crossing illegally with trespassing. Those bills could be sent to the House for full consideration later this week. Time check 609, 48 degrees. And still to come, the Spurs were back in action as we approach the start of the regular season. We're going to have some highlights from their matchup against the Rockets. Plus, Harris comes on, the call, the catch, the win in game two. The Rangers two wins away from the World Series after taking two games on the road against the Astros. How it all went down in Houston. Up next. Let's look out there with live cam, rise and shine and grab that jacket. It's kind of nice to be able to do that, right? Enjoy it while it lasts. We'll be right back. For some San Antonio families, Day of the Dead means writing calaveras, poking fun at those you love or despise through these witty poems. It's common in Mexico. So how did calaveras come to San Antonio? Would you believe that one person brought them over? Moises Espino del Castillo. Castillo meaning castle. So he then becomes the Duke of Calaveras. He was asked to write some poetry for our local newspaper back in the early, early 70s. He was a Spanish professor, so all his work was done in Spanish. So then he was asked to do some calaveras, which he objected to because he said, no one going to be able to read them in an English-speaking newspaper. But nonetheless, he did write them and started then a 30-year career in writing calaveras. I think that is just one of the most incredible things that you can single-handedly say this person brought the Calaveras to San Antonio, Texas. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys in L.A. last night taking on the Chargers on Monday Night Football. Dak Prescott threw for 272 yards, a touchdown, and helped the boys rebound from a meltdown last week against the Niners to beat the Chargers last night 20-17. to Prescott completed 21 of 30 and had a rushing touchdown. He connected with Brandon Cooks for a two-yard score in the fourth quarter in the game to give the Cowboys a 17-10 lead. L.A. tied it at 17 with a one-yard touchdown pass from Justin Herbert after Brandon Aubrey gave the Cowboys a 2017 lead with a 39 yard field goal. Chargers had one last chance to send it to Obeats overtime, but Stephon Gilmore picked off Herbert at the LA 33 yard line to seal the win for Dallas. The atmosphere electric out in Houston last night for game two of the American League Championship Series. Astros looking to tie the series up at a game at a piece, but the Rangers bats were on fire to start this one. Rangers would play four runs in the top of the first. Bottom of the second, Jordan Alvarez hits the stitches off the ball. 420 feet, well, he wasn't done there. Two run game in the bottom of the eighth. Jordan tells Araldis Chapman, you're done for the night. This homer pulls the Strohs within one, but it was Rangers closer Jose Leclerc who gets Jose Altuve to pop it up to end the game. Rangers take game two, 5-4. There's Altuve's hit. Game three is tomorrow night up in Arlington. San Antonio Spurs' third preseason game was last night against the Houston Rockets. It featured a lighter roster without Victor Wimbenyama and a couple other guys, but some Spurs veterans made plays like Zach Collins getting a rebound and finishing with a two-handed slam. Here it comes. But when the benches were emptied, the Rockets made a comeback, and Coach Pop's former assistant, Ime Udoka, got the last laugh against his former boss. Rockets win it 99-89. Spurs' next preseason game is tomorrow night. Cross Bank Center also against the Houston Rockets. Well, they have another chance then. They do. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 616. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos.
It's been easy for me over here, guys. 281 at Hildebrand as we see the north and southbound lanes aren't too crowded with traffic, but give it some time. We have not even started morning rush, so things are expected to get busy as the day progresses. But right now, things are moving along just fine. North and southbound lanes, again, pretty quiet out there. Just remember, slow down before you approach that curb. Let's get a look at our map. So it's pretty quiet right now. We have had a lot of overnight construction. All of it has since wrapped up, but we want you to be ahead before you have to head out the door. So just plan ahead of time because we do have a bridge work taking place along I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. Now, as a reminder, this work has been taking place throughout the week, but we're going to see more of it on Friday, October 20th. That should wrap up a portion of it on Saturday, October 21st, 9 in the evening or 9 at night to 5 in the morning. We'll see a full closure of the main lanes and the intersection in both directions. That's east and west at FM 1518. But scan this QR code. I updated the list of closures on our website so you have all the information you need to know before you have to hit the roads. There's a lot happening along 1604 as well throughout the week. I'll have more updates on that a little later uh, on in the morning, but just again, a lot of road work to be on the lookout for. But so far, traffic is moving along just fine. Okay, glad you're back from vacation. Yes. Glad to be back. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you guys. Got more than a bus? couple days, it freaks people out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it does. As you do get on the bus this morning, yeah. uh, 47 degrees, so very mm -hmm. chilly and even colder in parts of the hill country. Bundle up, grab your sunglasses also, because, boy, that sunrise is just going to be blinding out there. Beautiful all day long, 78, so a huge, huge warm-up this morning, or throughout the day, I should say. Another just picture-perfect day. Tomorrow's going to be pretty nice as well. By the way, the International Space Station at 7.05 is going to be passing overhead from the uh, southwest to the northeast. It's going to last about seven minutes. Now, just a couple of little uh, facts and figures. Five miles per second is how fast that is in Earth orbit. So it orbits every 90 minutes. They get to see the sun rise and set 16 times a day. And that thing is huge, a football field in length. And it's those huge, huge solar panels on there that reflect the, uh, the sun. That's why it's you can see it going by. So just to check that out in about, uh, what, 45 minutes or so. All right, no glow of the sunrise as of yet, but lots of clear skies. We've got just bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. And that's why you walk outside. You can see all those stars out there and why we're going to be able to see the International Space Station fly over. Temperature right now is at 49, 37 Bernie Stage, 42 at Rio Medina and 45 at Randolph and there's a hint of a breeze so it adds that little bit of a little bit of a snap to those temperatures I guess you could call it 77 yesterday 81 in Honda mostly in the uh, the 70s around the area yesterday and that's going to be the situation again today a few 80s there along the, uh, the Rio Grande and these temperatures are on average going to be four or five degrees below the normal average high temperature, which here in town is 82 degrees at this time of year. So obviously nothing is showing up on the satellite picture right now as far as any cloud cover and really not much of anything's going on around the country. They did have a big, big rain event up to the northeast that's moved on out of here and everything is uh, kind of sliding up to the north and in this configuration or with this nothing going on I should say there's nothing for us this week except a whole bunch of sunshine around here we are uh, as colder colder than it even is in Bismarck uh, North Dakota as of right now as well as Minneapolis and it's kind of a heat wave up there in Cutbank Montana at 55 degrees so the forecast we are going to be making it up to 78 degrees today 81 tomorrow starting off at 53 so not as chilly but still jacket weather and then that big warm-up again another 30 degrees throughout the course of the day. Thursday, actually starting tomorrow, the humidity is going to begin to work its way back into the picture. It's still going to be comfortable tomorrow, but we'll start off Thursday with more humidity around here. Then the front moves on through. Now, this is not a, well, technically it's a cold front, but it ain't going to be colder in behind this thing. As a matter of fact, we do heat up. It, the front will get rid of some of the humidity, so at least those 90s are going to be a bit more comfortable going into the weekend, but it's going to be a hot weekend around here. Then the humidity comes back in to start off next week, mm. but then there right now looks like there's going to be a chance for some rain throughout a uh, fairly decent chunk of next week, so that would be good to see. Yeah, that's not bad. We can, it, you know, with the payoff of some rain, we can take that humidity. Right, but I mean, another very dry week this week. Yeah. Beautiful weather, but dry. All right, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 621, 48 degrees. And just ahead, Southwest Airlines making changes to its frequent flyer program. How that could help your holiday travel in your GMA first look. 
This right here is confidence in a bottle. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes. And I did this to my father. We were at home, so we applied it to his under eye bags, and let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view, and now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com, or call the number on your screen. In this morning's GMA First Look, frequent flyers face off. As Americans begin racing to book their holiday travel, Southwest Airlines announcing new perks to try to win your loyalty, making it easier to earn higher status with better access to upgrades by lowering the number of flights required to become an A-list status member, offering things like free drinks to top elite members. And it's really bucking the trend of what we see with other airlines, which are actually making it harder, making it so that you need to spend more money. Um, to achieve this sort of level of status. That includes Delta Airlines. The CEO saying the company probably went too far with recent changes, making it more difficult to earn status and access their lounges. Delta's now vowing to revisit those changes. They're really leaning into the premium, the sort of upsell. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you how to make this fight for your airline loyalty, land some big savings. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, video game streaming on Netflix. Limited beta testing coming to the U.S. after trials in the U.K. and Canada. Only two games will be available and testers will have to download Netflix's controller app. And you can now log on to your WhatsApp account without typing in your password. If you have an Android device, users can use their phone's facial recognition or fingerprint scanner. The WhatsApp passkey support follows Google, which did the same thing last week. And Spotify making it easier for fans to purchase gear featuring their favorite artists. A new merchandise hub provides recommendations based on your listening habits. Users can browse an artist's merchandise items and then purchase them through the artist's store. Not another thing to make it easy for shopping. I know. <laughs> that's, too, oh, that's too much. What a tragedy. <laughs> I know. Time now, 626 and 48 degrees for now. Let's check on traffic this morning. And uh, as I posted on social media a little while ago, expect long lines at... Uh, at tire repair shops today for air in your tires. Colder weather uh, leads to low tire pressure and a lot of us are gonna see those lights on the dash this morning. We'll be back. And we continue to cover breaking news about a deadly shooting by San Antonio police. A neighborhood just west of downtown is the scene of that shooting. Katrina Weber live on Colima near Guadalupe Ibarra. Katrina, has there been any word yet on exactly how this all happened? No specific details. Now, I did check with the sergeant just about 10 minutes ago. He told me that all of our questions will be answered by San Antonio Police Chief William McManus, who is due to come out here at some point this morning. Uh, it did happen right here on Colima near Guadalupe Ibarra, out here on the street. Uh, what I did get from police is that uh, an officer, at least one officer, shot and killed a man who they say was armed with a gun. Uh, initially, we heard the call come out that police was chasing this man, running after him, uh, and that he had a gun. And we don't know what transpired between the officers and that man that caused them to pull their own guns and then pull the trigger. Police have this area shut down right now, and there's also another side street that they have roped off. And in the middle of that, there is a car with the door open. We don't know how that's connected. I asked the sergeant, but he was not able to tell me anything about how that car might be connected to the scene. But police have both of these areas roped off in this neighborhood as they continue to investigate what happened. I couldn't help but notice that some of the detectives who were here left, uh, and as well as some of the officers, it could be due to shift change, which happens right about now. But we still do have an active scene here, and we're waiting for more information from the police chief, who is due here at some point this morning. Reporting live on the near west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina, and good morning. It's about 6.31, Tuesday, October 17th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Mike Ostrage is here to talk about how cold it is. We haven't been this cold since. It is since uh, March 20th. Yeah. Way back then, almost seven months ago. It definitely feels like fall out there right now. It is wonderful. Step outside, grab a jacket, and I can't tell if that's the glow of the uh, the lights and the street lights, or if we're starting to see a little bit of the uh, the glow of the sunrise. The sun's not going to be coming up for a little bit more than an hour, so maybe not quite yet, but it is going to be spectacular again. We've got very, very dry air out there with dew point down to 39. Clear skies, dry air, light wind. That's what's allowing temperatures to drop. We'll uh, drop another degree or two here or there before it's all said and done. 37 right now at Bernie, 39 Comfort, 45 at Randolph, and uh, 46 in Castroville, Rio Medina at 42. Then there's a little bit of a wind chill in places. It feels like 47 out there at the airport. Just a puff of a breeze, but doesn't take much with these colder temperatures. So clear and again, coldest since March 20th. Then sunny upper 70s. Fantastic. We gain on average 30 degrees across the board today. Good indication of some really dry air in place. Now tomorrow still very, very nice. A chilly morning, not as cold. Still jacket weather. The humidity is going to begin to return. It's not going to be humid tomorrow, but we'll start to see those dew points and more moisture coming on in here. And then it's going to be humid to start off on Thursday, but a front's going to move on through here. Not a cold, well, technically a cold front. All it's going to do is get rid of some of the humidity, but in behind that thing, it is going to be heating up. It's going to feel like summer again. So we're fall today, fall tomorrow, summer, especially by the weekend. We're looking at 90s again this weekend. What about rain chances? We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, still peaceful on the road. It's peaceful, but you know, when we have cooler weather, as Mark had mentioned earlier, Mike, uh, we can expect to see some low tire pressure uh, in our vehicles and it's not sure whether or not uh, it's not sure clear. I should say whether or not that has led to some of the stall vehicles that we're seeing out there. But nonetheless, be on the lookout. US 90 right behind me. You see that we have a stalled vehicle that's off in the eastbound lane. So we'll get to that in just a moment, but that seems to be the trending trouble out there on the roadways. You can see a little bit of that congestion also building along 90. But as we take you in, it's going to be right Right here, first stall is along US 90 westbound at Callahan Road. This is not causing any issues because it's in the westbound lanes and a lot of folks are making their way in the eastbound lanes heading into the downtown area of San Antonio. But as you drive further along those eastbound lanes, that's where we have that stall vehicle we just showed you on the trans guide cameras. It's right there near Couples Road, not causing issues just yet, but that same problem does continue over here along Loop 410 westbound right there at the I-35 interchange. So again, that is the trouble right now that we're seeing out there on the roadways. No major incidents to report just yet, but we're going to keep a close eye on, th on things. But as always, make sure you check your vehicles before you get out there on the roadways and make sure to move over or slow down if you see those flashing lights. Mark. Stephen, thank you. The city of San Antonio using part of its $3.7 billion budget to tackle homelessness. The issue was front and center at a town hall last night in City Council District 4. John Paul Barajas was there as people asked questions about the city's plans. People who spoke tonight brought up a variety of different issues and concerns with the three main topics that we heard people talk about was concerns with losing their home that they currently have, affordable housing, and if encampment sweeps are humane. Now, District 4 Councilwoman Adriana Rocha Garcia addressed those concerns alongside representatives with Haven for Hope, Corazon Ministries, and South Alamo Regional Alliance for the Homeless. The Councilwoman noted the city budget has $200,000 for rental and utility assistance to help prevent more people from experiencing homelessness. As for those who have additional property and want to help provide affordable housing, officials pointed to Opportunity Home. It can help with housing vouchers and how they can benefit both for landlords and those in need of shelter. Leadership at tonight's meeting also stressed the need for more housing, and not just now, but in the future. We need close to 30,000 units of affordable housing in the next decade to keep up with the, the demand uh, in that time and a thousand units of permanent supportive housing in addition to that. And so the city with their housing bond is chipping away at that, um, but we still have more work to do. Lastly, they said the extra housing is needed as the city plans to conduct 700 encampment sweeps during the 2024 fiscal year. Officials at the town hall say sweeps alone are not the solution, but with advance notice, they can be done humanely. The city has set aside $700,000 for homeless prevention, communication efforts, and neighborhood outreach. To watch the full town hall, you can go to our website, ksat.com. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. 
Happening today, SAISD holding another community meeting. This comes as the district considers a proposal would eventually close 19 campuses due to low enrollment. Today's meeting will be held at Huppert's Elementary. It starts at 6. The board will vote on the proposal coming up on November 13th. And the property where the now shuttered, shuttered pig stand restaurant once stood for 100 years might be the next hotspot for downtown San Antonio. A marketing team is hoping to attract big brand retailers like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Rolex to the future Bessa district. The 15 acres mixed use project would be across the street from the Pearl on Broadway Street. The development would be done in two phases with the first breaking ground next year. Well, the president of the Government Hill neighborhood says there's concerns about the scale of that project and what the developer is planning to do to improve the community for people who already live there. With so much development uh, going on, we, we, we definitely need some things happening here. So we just need to say, you know, you're going to come in and develop, so what are you going to give back to the neighborhood? What's going to benefit us here? San Antonio staff have recommended the approval of a rezoning for the land where the old pig stand restaurant used to sit. That zoning hearing is at 1 p.m. today. Muertos Fest is back at Hemisphere Park later this month. It is the biggest Dia de los Muertos festival in all of Texas. Over 100,000 people came out last year. And now that Civic Park is open, organizers say it has more space for ofrendas, local art vendors, and live music. Muertos Fest happening October 28th and 29th. If you can't make it, KSAT will bring you the best parts of the celebration right here on KSAT November 1st at 8 o'clock that evening. And before we go to break, mark November 3rd on your calendar. Everyone is invited to join the city's Department of Arts and Culture to celebrate the completion of San Antonio's largest tile mural. It's Illuminación de la Plaza. It was created by local artist Christopher Montoya, who drew inspiration from the mural from the history of Plaza de Armas or Military Plaza. You can read more about the uh, new piece uh, right now on KSAT.com. Just look for this article. Time now, 638 and 48 degrees for now. Just ahead on GMSA, important news if you work with some Gen Zers, how you can better lead and motivate them after the break. 642, welcome back. Generation Z was born between 1995 and 2012, which puts some of them in their early 20s. And these young adults have taken the workplace by storm. By 2030, they will make up 30% of the workforce. So what motivates this new generation of employees? Alexa Lorenzo tells us how you can lead them the right way. Generation Z is the youngest, most diverse generation in the workforce today. And they are different than past generations. Very technology oriented. A little bit of lack of respect, sometimes for older people. Positive saying they're inquisitive and they teach you a lot. So how can older generations lead them? First, offer Gen Zers state-of-the-art tools. One study found one-third of Gen Z employees expect their organizations to provide modern technology. These young professionals also value purpose in their careers. Managers can offer volunteer initiatives or mentor programs to make work more meaningful. Gen Z also requires praise and lots of it. In fact, research found Gen Z needed praise from their supervisors three times a week or 156 times a year, where millennials required recognition just three times a year and Gen X only once a year. Mental health is another priority for Gen Z. According to one report, 42 percent of Gen Zers have been diagnosed with a mental health condition. Managers can provide support at work by offering training programs, yeah, yeah. reducing stigma, and making sure mental health coverage is part of the company's health care plan. Helping you lead the next generation of leaders. I'm Alexa Lorenzo reporting. Just about 644. Let's go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Um, well, guys, we have the stall vehicle here at 90 at Couples. I've been keeping a very close eye on it. It's not causing issues, but we are getting busier there in the eastbound lanes. You can see a lot of that traffic coming to a slowdown. Usual hot spot in the morning, so just be on the lookout if you're heading in from Castroville. Even if you're heading out toward Castroville, you can see we have a few of those stalled vehicles in and around the Alamo City. But we're going to take you right there to that corridor where we have the first one reported along 90 at Callahan. And it's not causing issues, but again, as we drive further down I-10 eastbound, that's when we see the other one that just showed up on your trans guide camera. So 
be on the lookout there. The same trend does continue as we take that drive further up along Loop 410 westbound at I-35. And as we've been saying throughout the morning, it's likely because of the cooler weather that could have caused some of those issues out there with the tire pressure. So check your vehicle before you get out on the roadways and plan ahead. While we're talking about US 90, just be on the lookout tomorrow morning. We do have rail work taking place. This should see the single westbound main lane closure from Callahan Road to West Military Drive. But guys, other than that, it's been a pretty smooth morning. Stall vehicles aren't too much of a worry, but when we have a lot of traffic out there, just be sure to be on the lookout for any of those flashing lights and make sure you get to your destination safely. Thank you, Stephen. You bet. Another reminder in 20 minutes, uh, go look outside if you have the opportunity and look down in the southwest. The International Space Station is going to be flying over and yeah. just about directly overhead. Maximum height is going to be 86 degrees, so that will come from the southwest and then head over to the northeast. It's going to last for seven minutes. So again, this is at uh, just after seven o'clock this morning. And of course, we've got a lot of clear skies for that. And now we're starting to see the glow of the sunrise this morning. Yeah, beautiful out there. 49 degrees, 38 comfort, 37 at Bernie Stage and 45 right now at Randolph 42 Rio Medina, as well as Bandera, a couple of the, uh, the colder readings. And we've got obviously bone dry air. So clear skies, light wind, dry air. That's why temperatures are are dropping down those three ingredients for the perfect radiational cooling, as we call it. So temperatures are going to be warming up very quickly all the way through the 50s and 60s by noon up to 71. And then we top off at 78, still slightly below normal after a 30 degree rise in temperatures throughout the day. So here's what's going on. This is the uh, big mass of cold air. This is what gave us the great looking weekend, brought the front on through here. That continues to work its way on out of here, but not until another beautiful day today, another beautiful day tomorrow. This next blob of cold air, this next trough, which is not quite what the first one was, that will move down in here. Now, just looking at this, you'd think, okay, we've got another batch of cold air. This one's a little too far away, and it's not really snagging onto any cold air, but it is going to pull in drier air. So what return of the humidity we have starting tomorrow, really, and early Thursday is going to get pushed on out of here. Good thing because here comes the ridge of high pressure moving in across us, and that's what's going to be heating us up for the weekend, getting back up into the low 90s this weekend, and we'll have pretty much low humidity throughout most of the weekend. Then that starts to return on Sunday. That next big trough is developing out there first part of the week. So this is going to pull in more humidity. We also get a lot of moisture that's going to be coming in, some from the Pacific, but mainly from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to help to feed some showers by the first part of, or excuse me, by the middle part of next week with that uh, that moisture and everything else in there. Then we're going to be looking at that next big uh, trough out there to the northwest to move on through here. So long, long range, that's going to be pulling a front through, I mean, with some colder temperatures, but not until the latter part of next week. So this is what it looks like today, 78 degrees. Just a spectacular day again. Jacket pretty much all morning long. 81 tomorrow after starting off in the low 50s. We get into Thursday, we start to see more humidity, especially tomorrow night into Thursday. Drier air comes on in here with that front. It's a little deceiving to actually put a front, I think, on that graphic because mm. in behind it, I mean, Thursday, 88, 93, Friday, 92 on Saturday. That's going to be a hot weekend around here. Humidity is going to be okay, but then humidity comes back in here next week. I like how you put the reminder on the graphic. Yeah. Not cooler. It's not, it, it is, but it isn't right. cold front. So. Okay. The not so cold front. Right. Okay. Thanks, Mike. 648, 48 degrees. And you have a degree. So now what? Tomorrow on GMSA, how to land your first post graduation job. Outside with live cam waking up on a Tuesday with us here on GMSA. Yes, a little bit better look at that uh, Tuesday morning sunrise. We'll be right back. Streaming now. It is one of those dream interviews, a bucket list. Spreester session, by the way. It's a chance to sit down with Texas legend Robert Earl Keane and get a tour of his ranch. I'm a songwriter and I make people happy when I play being a legend. I don't know. I, don't, I sort of enjoy people not being able to recognize me. And for some reason, my voice gives me away all the time. Streaming now on these platforms. 
Urban 15 is a nonprofit arts organization, and since the early 80s, their Dia de los Muertos processions have combined both their spirituality and talent. When you see Urban 15, you've seen a rhythmic moving altar. When we are in costume, we're in character. It's a transformation. Color, it's movement, it's rhythm, it's costuming, it's the banners, it's the lighting. Uh, we're, we're one big altare moving down uh, the street. So we grew up in a tradition of procession. As part of Dia de los Santos and Dia de los Muertos uh, was a very natural thing to do. And I will say in the beginning, when we were first doing this, people didn't quite understand what we were doing and people were um, offended. Othering our ancestors and our parents and our grandparents and the people who came before us, it's a very natural thing to do and many cultures don't do that. As we dance and we play music, it is a, a form of honor. It's a form of prayer. Good morning. Coming up here, our team is live in Israel with the latest on the ground as President Biden prepares to visit the region in hopes of heading off a wider war and a humanitarian catastrophe. Also, don't miss another Show Me the Money. GMA is helping some basketball fans find unclaimed cash. We're going to show you how you could score, too. Plus, we've got another Monday night football surprise for a super fan family. You don't want to miss it on GMA. Well, we've all turned to Google one time or another looking for an answer to a health or medical question, but with all the results that can pop up, it can be very hard to tell what's credible and what's not. Today on GMSA at 9, we're going to speak with a Consumer Reports health expert about how to different, different, <laughs> different differentiate excuse me, between the two, what to be wary of, and which websites you can rely on. We've got a meeting, so I think it's David and Tiffany coming up for the conversation and much more today on GMSA at 9, you okay? Yeah, sorry okay. about that. <laughs> I have trouble differentiating myself. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey Steven. That differentiate, dif oh, okay. it's, it's, <laughs> it's early, buddy. It's early. And we I all get some grace, right? <laughs> yeah, we all get some grace. And you know what, back from vacation too, so I mean, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> all right, 90 at Couples, guys. Great shot of the sunrise behind me. You can see that traffic's moving along just fine in the east and westbound lanes, but we have entered morning rush, and thankfully I've not seen any issues reported by TxDOT just yet that would slow you down, but we do have the usual congestion as we take you right to our map. Stalls also reported 410 westbound at I-35. Be on the lookout there, but as we give you a wider view, you're just going to see a lot more of that congestion that continues to build up out there. US 90 eastbound, yep, right around 1604, it's usual hot spot, and 35 heading northbound right around the downtown area. But guys, we'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. Just expect some congestion and pack your patience this morning, Mike. Looks like a painting out there. Just absolutely gorgeous with the glow of the sunrise this morning. That nice band of orange right across the horizon. Sun's not going to be coming up for about another Oh, 40 minutes right around there. 47 degrees now here in town. 41 Bandera, 37 up the road in Bernie. By the way, with these clear skies out there, don't forget uh, in about 10 minutes, space station is going to be flying overhead. 71 at noon, big warm up this morning. 78 high temperature today, an absolutely spectacular day. Plenty of sunshine out there. And tomorrow, another great looking day. Then that front moves through. It's just going to get rid of what humidity tries to come back on in. But this is, I guess we call it a hot cold front. Hot cold, a hot front. cold yes, front. Yes, because a cold front is technically moving on through here or uh -huh. in the area, but we are going to be very hot in behind that. It's going to feel like summer. Well, that cold weekend, front's a liar. So. <laughs> a liar. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> we so, don't tolerate that. Space station southwest to northeast? Yes. Should, should be very visible. Yes. All right, look out yes. for it.